Jet Set Radio, Lethal League, Sonic Rush, Hover, and the upcoming Bomb Rush Cyberpunk. Take a second and try to think what all of those video games have in common. You stumped? You don't know? Well, let me give you the answer. The soundtracks to all of these titles can largely be credited to one man, Hideki Naganuma. Now, I find Mr. Naganuma particularly fascinating. If you go onto his Twitter profile, you'll find that a majority of his tweets are just total shitposting. Sometimes he'll go on about how Family Guy is his all-time favorite show, sometimes he just memes, more like most of the time, really. Sometimes he will just simply state if he's horny or not, and sometimes he will just vibe with his fans. Sure, there's times where he posts about his music. You'll be sure to find tweets about his Spotify statistics and new projects that he's a part of. But those, those are just a drop into the ocean compared to the memes and the pure shit posting that he and his fans contribute daily. Born in 1972 in Hokkaido, Japan, Naganuma's entire life pretty much involved music in some way, shape, or form. Hideki's older sister influenced him to learn to play the electronic organ at only age five. Nine years later, Hideki would begin to make his own music, and decided to pursue a career in this interest. From 1993 to 1997, Naganuma worked two jobs. In one, he was a DJ, and in the other, he was a bartender. His main goal at the time was to become a famous singer and songwriter in the J-pop industry. Those plans were later discarded, however, when he sent his demo tapes to the video game company Sega in the year 1998. Sega, thinking that what Naganuma sent them was pretty cool shit, hired him for voice editing and soundtrack composition. His first major voice editing job was for Shoujo Kakume Utena, Itsuka Kakume Sareru Monogatari, also known as Revolutionary Girl Utena, a visual novel game spawned from the manga of the same name. His first soundtrack job was for Hip Jog Jog, some sort of fucking Tamagotchi looking thing as far as the Google searching would tell me. But none of that matters, compared to what he worked on next. Fuck the other stuff. Naganuma became the lead composer for the game franchise that would put him on the map. Jet Set Radio. Now, for the dumbasses in the audience who have never heard of Jet Set Radio, I'll try to describe it to you. Okay, so first, think of the Tony Hawk games. Now, imagine if they took place primarily in Japan. Now swap out the skateboards for inline skates and put a heavier focus on the graffiti mechanic from Tony Hawk's Underground. Yeah, put a focus on that for being like one of the main points of the entire game. Now jam in some kick-ass music. That right there is Jet Set Radio, which happens to be one of my favorite games and is something you should check out. It seemingly goes on a Steam sale every week for like a buck fifty or so. So there isn't much that should be stopping your broke ass from buying it. Now, aside from the video game soundtracks, Naganuma also worked on an anime soundtrack as well, once. He did two songs for Air Gear, which is an anime that I would describe as Jet Set Radio with titties. However, he had to use the alias Skank Funk for contractual reasons. I mean... I don't think Sega would be too pleased if he was working for them and then contributing music to the softcore porn rollerblading anime, you know? Up to today, Naganuma has been composing music for games such as the previously mentioned Lethal League and Bomb Rush Cyberpunk. Outside of his work, he is a self-proclaimed Western weeaboo, a horny man, and an avid Twitter shitposter. The holy fucking trinity right there. His compositions are so goddamn good, I listen to them even when I'm not playing the games associated with them. 
And I really can't wait for Bomb Rush Cyberfunk to drop in 2021 so I can hear the new tracks that Mr. Hideki Naganuma himself has to offer. After all, it is the music of Hideki Naganuma that has taught me the following. There truly ain't nothing like a funky beat. I'm Mike Osiris, and I'm going back under. It seems today that all you see is violence in movies and sex on TV. But where are those good old-fashioned values on which we used to rely?